Australia's weak economy. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein in my hand and I thought we would have a look at this article from the Sydney Morning Herald. And it's to do with the OECD's concerns regarding the weak economy here in Australia. The OECD is the Economic Cooperation and Development, or the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. 36 of the richest countries coming together and writing reports and designing policies to work together for the future of the world. Yeah, well, you know, it's a job. Somebody has to do it. And let's have a look at their concerns over our weak Australian economy. And they're pushing for more government spending. As the Australian economy is weak, with households weighed down by slow wage growth and higher taxes. The OECD has declared in a report that backs lower interest rates, calls for more government spending, and paves the way for unconventional monetary policy. So here we go. We're paving the way for quantitative easing and negative interest rates. In its six monthly review of the global economy, the Paris-based think tank has sharply downgraded its expectations for Australia while raising serious concerns about the level of debt being carried by households. The Morrison government this week announced $3.8 billion of infrastructure projects would be pulled forward or given additional funding over the next four years. The decision followed calls from the Reserve Bank of Australia, which has sliced official interest rates to record lows of 0.75% for a lift in public spending, plus productivity enhancing structural reforms. Well, $3.8 billion may sound like a lot, but it really is a drop in the ocean when you think about it on a larger scale of things, guys. It really is a drop in the ocean. But economists have warned the new spending will equate to less than 0.1% of gross domestic product. Well, there we go. I was just saying that. Less than, what, a tenth of 1%. Let that just sink in, guys. Let that just sink in. A tenth of 1% over four years. Do you think it'll make any noticeable difference? So... They're arguing much more needs to be done to get the economy growing fast enough to bring down the national unemployment rate. Well, yes, but don't worry. The RBA is always spot on with all their predictions for wage growth. I'm sure they'll get it right this time. Oh, yeah. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which noted the global economy was now growing at its slowest rate since the GFC, said it expected Australian GDP to expand by 2.3% this year and next, well short of the federal government's forecast. It also expects private consumption, which accounts for about 60% of total economic activity, to barely grow faster than inflation over the next two years. In March, the OECD was expecting unemployment to start edging down. It has now lifted its forecast, tipping unemployment to average 5.3% in 2020. I would even argue that is somewhat optimistic based on the data they're, they're using. 5.3%. If we have a look at the Roy Morgan data, it's higher. And even if unemployment stays at this, participation rate could drop. Well, people could be underemployed. That could grow. You could get less hours. Have you ever worked in a business where people have just had their hours cut. I know when Rachel was working for an architectural practice and they were slowing down, they had to cut the hours back significantly. Okay, you can only do three days a week. You've got to do it sometimes. It's better than losing your job. So that's underemployment. Ec economic activity has been weak, the OECD said about Australia. Private consumption spending has been sluggish, weighed down by slow wage growth and an increase in taxes paid by households. Well, there you go. While the government has argued its recent tax cuts will help households offset slow wage growth, the OECD and other organizations, such as the RBA, have noted overall tax levels are increasing as the budget returns to surplus. Research this week from the National Australia Bank found Australian household debt was now at a record high of 202% of annual income. The OED said 
high household indebtedness could exacerbate any economic shock that hit Australia. It said, with the RBA likely to cut interest rates further, which in turn could feed into a lift in house prices, lending standards may have to tighten to protect households. This is the biggest concern, that the RBA cutting interest rates, which was predicted again, they were contem they were, you know, they mentioned in the previous minutes that they'd contemplated it, seriously considered cutting rates last month or this month. And that was a shock to our dollar. But, but the thing is, if, well, if it starts another housing bubble, where's that money going to go? Where's most of Australia's wealth? It's in housing, one way or another, guys. It's in housing. High household indebtedness means that the authorities should stand ready to tighten macro prudential policy settings if lower interest rates fuel house price inflation through a sharp pickup in credit, the OEC found. Essentially, they want more government spending. While expecting further rate cuts, the organization said the Morrison government should loosen fiscal policy to help the economy grow faster. Fiscal policy is expected to provide little support to economic growth in accordance with the federal government's commitment to future budget surpluses, it said. A more expansionary fiscal stance may be warranted given that the economy is growing well below its potential and the relatively low public debt burden. Okay, but you get more government spending, more government spending in infrastructure. Where is that money going to go? You've got the issue. We could have the broken window fallacy. They'll break things and just rebuild them for the sake of creating creating capacity. Most of the infrastructure spending that we have in Australia is roads. It's roads. That's not innovation. I don't care what anyone says. That's not innovative. They've been doing that for years. And then you have to maintain the roads. Where's a special economic zone? Maybe technology precincts, someone suggested, near the universities for businesses trying to create collaboration. I'm a bit cynical about universities, and I'm sure a lot of people are, but still we need to start thinking outside the box. We're just building roads. America did that. They built roads to stimulate their economy. Now they're all crumbling. But foreign, you get to maintain them too. Do you? Is that a good thing? That's an ongoing expense. So at the same time, growth enhancing tax reforms should be prioritized. These include shifting the tax mix away from direct taxes and ineffective taxes like real estate stamp duty to the GST and land taxation. Can you see that's the thing. GST was already meant to get rid of stamp duty. Okay, GST was meant to get rid of stamp duty and other taxes and payroll tax at the state level. Did it? I don't know. I, I helped my mother to pay stamp duty on her property a couple of months ago. I had to pay stamp duty on this place. Let me know if you got out of paying stamp duty. So I don't think the GST has been successful there. And more taxes. I, I really think every tax should have a half-life. Every year, the amount that they can raise from it. Yeah, but then they'll just institute more, won't they? Won't they? Treasurer Josh Frydenberg said the nation's economic fundamentals remained at sound, with the country now in its 29th consecutive year of growth, but we've been depressed economically since the GFC. He said there were headwinds, particularly due to trade policy tensions that have hit confidence and business investment globally since May, but the government's focus on productivity enhancing reforms will ensure our economy remains resilient. Productivity enhancing reforms. The international challenges are a stark reminder of why we must stick to our economic plan, which has delivered lower taxes so you can keep more of what you earn, more infrastructure to boost productivity, what more roads, and which might return the budget back to surplus so we can meet the challenges that lie ahead. Okay, why don't we look at getting water more readily available? Why don't we, and this is written by Shane Wright. Why don't we look at nuclear as an option, cheaper power? We're pumping everything into renewables, everything. And if you just look at the you know total energy production, and we'll just reload. I mean, here you go. This is all the energy production of Australia. How many of them are at zero percent, guys? Look at all the little stars, which is all solar. Look at them all, zero percent now. This is right at this moment, six thirty. So, for half the time, they're all going to die. All going to be quiet. No power. There you go. So, we need to look at ways. You know, maybe. A little bit more innovation.
in our responses to this. What do you think, guys? Are you concerned of the OECD's you know, consideration that the Australian economy is weak? Who do you have more, more faith in regarding economic predictions, OECD or the RBA? Or your faith in neither? Let me know in the comments, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy my content and want to help me produce more, I have a Patreon where you can make a small donation. I have affiliate links with Amazon and eBay where I receive a small commission. We sell merchandise at the Heiser Says website where you can get handcrafted pocket squares. And finally, we also have PayPal if you want to make a donation. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.